Hi guys, and welcome to topic 8.2. We are continuing working with the balancing of chemical reactions, but now we're gonna introduce and start making things a little bit more complicated. And not that it means it's more difficult, but we just kind of started baby steps. And now here's kind of the next logical thing to discuss with balancing reactions. And that's what to do with you when you have polyatomics. So polyatomics can kind of make an equation look way more intimidating than what's really going on. You can see we have more things than what you saw in topic 8.1 and worksheet A. So when you look at those rules that go through how to balance, one of the rules is if you see polyatomics on both sides, balance them as a unit. So this only works if you see that polyatomic on each side. So for example, I see carbonate on both my reactants and product side. And I also have the polyatomic phosphate on both the reactant side and product side. So you balance that as a unit. So what I mean by that is when I list these out, I have CO3 and PO4. So instead of separating them into the elements that make them up, this makes it a lot easier than separating them. So when you look at this, notice that the polyatomics are not in parentheses. Therefore, we have one unit of them. Again, that three tells us that there's three oxygen and this four tells us that there's four oxygen. So we do not have three carbonates and four phosphates. And then from there, we have two remaining elements on the reactant side, and that is calcium and hydrogen. So calcium we're gonna balance next and hydrogen last. <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we wanna typically balance oxygen and hydrogen towards the end. Now, again, with the polyatomics having oxygen in it, again, we're balancing it as, it as a unit, so therefore it's not an issue. Now, we can go ahead and fill that in for quantity. We have one calcium and three hydrogens. So looking at the product side, I want to go in the same order. So carbonate, I also have one of them. However, the phosphate on the product side is in parentheses, therefore I have two of them. Uh, filling in the rest, calcium, there is three, and hydrogen, there is two. So when I start looking at <clears throat> what needs to take place in order to balance my equation, I have that I have one carbonate, so those are a balanced um, unit currently. And my phosphates, I have one and two. So I'm going to go ahead and add a two to the reactant side to bring that side up. Again, just like yesterday, we now have two phosphates, and I need to also update my hydrogen. So, so far, so good. My next unit I need to balance are the calcium. Looks like the reactant side is missing some, so I know one times three will get me there. So now I can update that, and I now have three carbonates. So working through, <clears throat> it looks like my carbonates are now off balance from one another. I have three on the reactant side, one on the product side, therefore I'm gonna add a coefficient of a three here. And now I'm gonna add and update my hydrogen to six. So as you can see, we now have carbonate equal to each other, phosphate are equal to each other, calcium are equal to each other, and so are the hydrogen. So again, oftentimes by balancing the polyatomics first, that takes care of all of your other elements in the end also. So that one is balanced. Again, you can leave this blank, write in a one, whichever your preference may be. Another example, dividing my reactants from my product side to set up my inventories. I can see I have OH on both sides. So because I have OH on both sides, and that's the only polyatomic in this example, I'm gonna start there. Now, my remaining elements are potassium, bromine, and iron, none of which are oxygen, carbon, or hydrogen. So order doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna list them out as I see them. And I'm gonna do the same thing to my product side. So getting a count, looks like OH, it's in parentheses on the reactant side, therefore I have three of them. Product side, there's one. One potassium, one potassium, one bromine, three bromine, one iron, one iron. So when I go ahead and start taking a look at balancing, 
I can see that my hydroxides are off already and I need to add to the product side. So I'm gonna add a coefficient of three here. So when I do that, that changes my inventory. I now have three hydroxides, but I also have three potassium. And that's the next item in my list. So I know I need to add a coefficient of three here to multiply out. And then my bromine also has a three. So it looks like I have three, 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 one. Looks like everything else is balanced. You can leave these blanks or put them in with a one. And number two is done. Another example, I have one polyatomic yet again, divide my reactants from my product side. The polyatomic is what we are gonna list first and that's carbonate in this example. And I have three of them. The remaining elements, again, none of which are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So just list them out. I have silver, iodine, and iron. I have one silver, one iodine, and two iron on the reactant side, taking care of the product side in the same order. Carbonate, there's only one on the product side. Silver, it looks like I have two of them. Uh, iodine, looks like three. And the iron, one. So when it gets to the point that I need to start balancing, it looks like my carbonates are off. So a coefficient here of three is going to fix that. That changes the carbonates to three, but then I have a coefficient three, subscript two. I now have six silver. That's actually, again, the next item in my list. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a six here. When I do that, that changes silver to six, but also my iodine to six. I now need to get my iodine to balance out, going from a three to a six. I know my coefficient then is going to be a two to multiply again to update that to six. That changes my iron to two. Taking a look, carbonate, silver, iodine and iron are all equivalent to each other and that one is balanced. Okay, so that trick works great if you see a polyatomic on both sides. So here right out of the gate, I can see that I have sulfate on both sides. I do see that I have my polyatomic hydroxide. It's on the reactant side, but I no longer see it in the format of hydroxide on the product side. So I still have the oxygen and hydrogen to show conservation once we balance, but I cannot balance using that polyatomic trick. So that's the one thing you do have to look out for. <coughs> so like the previous examples, we have sulfate. I have three on the product side, one on the reactant side. And then what's left is this hydrogen, boron, and oxygen. Boron is what we're gonna balance next. Balance hydrogen second to last. And here you have to be very careful. We have two and three, so a grand total of five. On the product side, it's only found in the water, so there's two. And always balance oxygen last. However, we are taking care of the oxygen and the sulfate by balancing the sulfate as a the unit. So ignore those oxygens. You are only going to account for the oxygens in these two compounds. So I have three oxygens in the boron hydroxide and in the water I have one. So now we're back to where we've been with balancing. So when I start taking a look, my sulfate, I have one and three, therefore the reactant side needs three. Careful in how you update because a lot of times students go, okay, I changed my hydrogen. So they go down here and they see that they have five total. They take three times five and say that they have 15. That is not correct. So we have here, we have three, and here we have six. So we now have nine hydrogen. I can see that the boron are not equal to each other. I have one on the reactant side, two on the products. I know a coefficient of two will take care of that. Again, careful in that we have to now update both the hydrogen and oxygen. I'm gonna take care of oxygen first. So this distributes in, that gives me three oxygen. My two then distributes to that. That gives me six oxygen. Here I have three times two. That gives me six hydrogen here. And I now have three times two, which gives me another six. So in total, I have 12 hydrogen on the, pro or excuse me, not the products, but the reactant side. 
So going back, sulfates are still equal. It looks like borons are still equal. Hydrogens, however, are not. I need to get my product side up to 12. I have a subscript 2. So that means I need to take something times 2 to get to 12, which is a 6. So that gets me 12. That changes my oxygen to 6. And let's take a look. Sulfates are equal. Borons are equal. Hydrogens are equal. And oxygens are. So we now have it balanced. So again, the reason why I threw this example at you was the idea that hydroxide rearranged, not necessarily broke down isn't the right word, but it, again, isn't in that same format on the product side. So you then separate it out into its appropriate elements. If you have questions, please let me know.